heart free Let the music dance around Come see our world Be our guest tonight It's such a happy time Whenever you're around Won't you come and spend some time of transformation. We keep undergoing a metamorphosis. We keep having the opportunity to renew our minds, or to put it another way, to change the way we think. I want you to listen to me right now. The most important freedom that you have is the freedom to change your mind. Hallelujah. You know, things from your past may be affecting your thinking, but you can't afford to give up your future because of things in your past. You can't allow that. And there's a place in your walk with God, a place of discipleship, where God will radically change your character. That's transformation. Would that change the stigma of your past? And I'm talking to somebody in here today. It's going to be erased, and you are going to get a fresh name in the community. But most importantly, there's going to be a change in your heart. You know, the mind of Christ is your inheritance. Did you know that? And how do I get the mind of Christ, Pastor Michelle? You get it through the word of God. God's word is his mind. And so every time that I hear the word of God and every time that I see the word of God, you have an opportunity for more growth and for more change into the word that you see, that you hear, and that you understand. you got to remember this. Yeah, I'm talking to everybody here. Anytime you see the word of God, hear the word of God, understand the word of God, you can be changed into that word that you see hear and understand, and then you can strengthen your brother. Then you can effectively and confidently reach somebody else and help them to grow because of your growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk about reaching people and helping them to grow. And if we're going to be the kind of disciple that they can really glean from, then we've got to get in this word. Now, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many in here are totally satisfied with the way your life is today? I mean, you're satisfied with your faith life. You're satisfied with your family relationships. You're satisfied with your financial situation. You're satisfied with your health or your fitness. I bet you if I were to poll the room this morning, I find that there's something in most of our lives that we want changed or improved. Amen? Amen? And maybe that something that needs to change and improve is you and me. Now, if you're not satisfied, what are you going to do about it? And guess what? That change is going to have to start with you. If you keep sitting back and thinking that you're going to do the same thing and get a different result, then you're fooling yourself. Pastor Bennett said that's the definition of insanity. Your God is a good, good father, and he wants only good things and the best for you. God wants to change your situation. God wants to change your status. God wants to give you a new name. But it's important because guess what's wrong with the body of Christ today? That's what I've come to understand. We go to church. We sing, we worship, we hear the word, we pay our tithes, we pray. But the problem with the body of Christ today is that we are in an identity crisis. We do all the motions, but we really don't know who we are. We don't know who we are in Christ Jesus. And we don't really know because in Genesis chapter 1, 26, the word of God says that he made us special. We're the only creation that he made in his image and after his likeness. And so we got to understand that we are just like God. And, and we are his offspring. God spoke the earth into existence. He spoke the creation to existence. And guess what? We have a creative force that can come from our mouth and we can speak what we want into existence. We are speaking spirits and we have God on the inside of us. 
and we can have what we say. And so when you know who you are in him, you're going to handle some stuff a little differently. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter about the naysayers or the persecution because you know God says who you are and you believe what God says about you. They don't define you and you don't have to allow them to. Now, young people, I need you to hear me right now. Someone might call you a name or try to label you because it's so crazy out in this world today. We don't know who's a man, who's a woman. This thing with this gay is going on. And even in the schools, kids are loosely telling people you are gay because maybe they don't know really who they are. But I came to tell you this morning that if you know that your identity is in Christ Jesus, who you really are is in Christ Jesus. And he says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't worry about what they say because as long as you know who you are, they can't change who you are. Amen? Yeah. It's getting so dark out there. It's getting so bleak out there. You're going to have to know who you are, people of God. Yeah. Because they came, the devil came to use them to change your mind, to confuse you, to make you think you don't know who you are. But the devil is a liar because my God said that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's marvelous to him. And he doesn't make any junk. And so, young people, you need to know who you are. You got to keep that in your heart. You got to stand in that because that's what's going to sustain you out here. Amen. And, and, and backbiting, jealousy, and even gossip, those are all signs of us having an identity crisis. We don't know who we are. Because if we knew who we were, we would operate in this fruit of the spirit that pastor's been talking about for several, several weeks. Because the Holy One of Israel, the Holy Ghost lives inside of us, and he is the fruit of the spirit. And so all we got to do is allow him to have his way in and through us. Even allowing yourself to be offended is a sign that you really don't understand who you are. If you can just allow somebody to say something to you, to get you jacked up, to make you leave the church, you do not know who you are. Because believe me, it's got to take more than that to move you. What we got going on in this earth right now, your feet have got to be planted in the ground, planted and anchored in Christ. Because even when the winds blow, the storms rage, the hurricanes come in your life, you got to still know who you are. Now, 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 now your identity is in Christ, and, and, and you've got to know your position in Christ. Your identity in Christ is tied to knowing your position in Christ no matter what's going on around you. Amen. And now I'm talking to you because I'm having to learn this for myself. See, I can't even bring it to you if he ain't already dealt with me about this thing. And, and there are blessings waiting for you. There are blessings waiting for me. But we have to know our position in Christ so that we can receive those blessings. You've got to position yourself for the change that you desire. I believe somebody said they weren't satisfied with everything going on in their life. And so this word is for you because you've got to position yourself for the change that you desire to come in your life. You got to position yourself for the blessing. You know, a quarterback will not throw the ball until the receiver is in the right position. And neither will God release the blessing until we are in the position to receive. So this morning, what I, I, I really want to talk to you about, but we're going to be connecting a few dots is positioned for the blessing. Because, see, we can't let what's going on in the world pull us down and make us not receive our blessing. Because we are God's people, and he wants to bless us. So you got the first slide for me, Chris? First of all, do you know what a privilege it is to be a child of God? Do you know it's a privilege to know God? to have accepted him as your savior and as your Lord, to have allowed him to choose you and pull you out of darkness into the light. Do you know that that's a privilege, that the light bulb has come on and that you see in the supernatural a God that a lot of people are not even in tune with? 
Romans 8, 15b through 17a says, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness. The spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. So you got to know who you are. You have been adopted into the family of God. You are a child of God. You can call him Abba Father. Jesus called him Abba Father. Paul referred to him as Abba Father. And Pastor Michelle, what in the world is Abba? Abba is an endearing term, an affectionate term that you give to your father when you have great intimacy with him, when you have a real personal relationship with him. And so it also says, and if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God first, and then joint heirs with Christ. You see, the writer is talking about adoption, but what he means is sonship. And, and we have this relationship with God now, and, and you think about people who think of adoption as taboo. I've seen people maybe from a different generation, they, they, they frown up at it. But if the truth be told, all of us that are believers have adopted by God into his family. And so if you want something to, to talk back to somebody when they're talking about that, let them know if you know God, if he's your father, then you've been adopted into his family. Amen. And this is how they talk. Paul and Jesus, they talk to their daddy like that. They had it like that. And he wants that same kind of relationship with me and with you. You know, what happened in the Roman culture was that a person that was adopted lost all the rights in his own family, but then he gained all the rights of a legitimate child in his new family. And the same is for the Christian. We gain all the privileges, all the responsibilities of a child in God's family. Amen. And so as believers this morning, we can celebrate because we are full heirs of our new daddy's estate. And a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's our daddy. We are heirs of God. Heir means that what's his is mine. The fullness of the Lord, the earth is mine too. And so I need to celebrate my new position, understanding who I am in Christ Jesus as a child of God. We can celebrate today. And it's something worth celebrating. It all belongs to God. Everything that he has is yours. Everything that he is, you are. But you got to know that. And you belong to him and he belongs to you. Glory to God. And so when we operate in that backbiting place and that head victim mentality place, that jealous place, that a place of offense, we have gone back to our low nature, to our old nature. We have forgotten who we are in Christ. We are made new. All things are passed away. All things have become new, and all of this is of God. But I can't just get the sermon on Sunday. I got to walk this out during the week. I got to be this when nobody is looking. And you might not always feel like you belong to God, but the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is a witness that you belong to God. The Holy Spirit is a significant part of your inheritance. Think about that. What a gift. And it's a multitude of multiplicity amount of inheritance, but the Holy Spirit is important. His presence on the inside of me reminds me that God loves me and that I can do all things. And ain't nothing that you can do about that. You can count on the Holy Ghost to comfort you and to lead and guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. But the thing is, we got to make a choice. Our position in Christ, let's have the next slide. Uh, I guess I might be getting a little ahead of myself, but after Jesus was God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says that God was highly exalted to a position of honor and at his right hand, and he gave him a name that's above every name. And so Jesus is seating in the highest position in the uniform verse certainly is going to affect you and affect me because knowing his position is dictating our position. Okay? 
Okay, so what does the Bible say about our position? Ephesians 2, 6 to 7. NIV says, and God raised us up with Christ. He raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And so what happened was when Paul wrote this scripture, he saw an image of us seated in heavenly places. Go to the next slide. And that position is what connects us and gives us access to the incomparable riches of his grace. So my position in Christ gives me access to the grace of almighty God. I've got to know that if he's in heavenly places, that I'm, he's in me, that I'm in heavenly places. Amen? And so you see, did you, can you get to the next one with the images? Oh, okay, good. So do you need help finding your seat? It says God raised us up with Christ and seated us in, heavenly, in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. So no matter what my circumstances no matter that I'm just sitting here at good success, guess what my position is? And seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And see, when you're going through hell and high water, and when the enemy is on your trail and you think you can't win, you got to remember this thing. You got to see that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And when I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, I'm connected to the incomparable grace of God, the riches of Almighty God. So no, no matter what your situation of circumstance, your position, though, is seated in heavenly places in Christ. And if you're a believer, if you're unemployed or employed, if you're short, if you're tall, if you live in the city, if you live in the suburbs, your position in Christ is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And you're above all darkness, all principalities, all power. And that means that Satan is under your feet. We walk around scared to death, walk around in fear, walk around burdened down. But we have got to make this word be one with us and us one with this word. If I'm seated in heavenly places with him and Satan is under his feet, then he's under my feet too. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter whether he's chasing you, no matter whether you're going through hell and high water, no matter what sickness is going on, no matter what financial lack, no matter what hell is going on in your house, no matter when your children are being rebellious, you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And that situation is temporary because it can turn around. Anything that you see is temporal. God came to allow us to change and to walk in our authority. When I'm seated there, I have authority, I have honor, and I have triumph. I have to walk in that authority. That's the problem. We don't know how to walk in it. Amen. We still act weak need. We got to know who we are. It's almost like being in the military. You know, you might think that they act a little arrogant or they beating on their chest, but who they are. Somebody done told them something. We ought to be like uh, uh, Elder House, a military man, knowing who we are in Christ because we are a part of the army of Almighty God. We fight the military. We just fight a different kind of fight. They're not carnal, but they're mighty to God to the pulling down the stronghold. So when you know who you are, you stand strong. You might have got a bad doctor's report. Your finances might be just wiggling at each other, but you stand tall because you know God going to turn that thing around. You are seated in heavenly places. You have an inheritance. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there are. You are heir of God and the joint heir of Jesus Christ. You see, you got to have the faith to believe in the manifestation so you can see those incomparable riches in your life. And that's the stuff we don't know. But that's the stuff you got to let change your mindset so that you can see the manifestation in the earth, so that you can see the victory in these situations. Let's see the um, next slide. Now, the Weymouth translation says he raised us with him from the dead. So when he raised him from the dead, he raised us from the dead. 
and enthroned us with him in the heavenly realms. And I keep telling you this because repetition is a great teacher. I never even heard of the way my translation till I was doing this study. But in order that by his goodness to us in Christ Jesus, he might display in the ages to come the, what is it, transcendent riches of his grace. And so when Jesus was raised from the dead, we were raised in the, from the dead. And in the King James Version, the word hath, it says, and God hath raised us up together. It's past tense. That means it's already done. Amen. We already been raised and sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We will rule and reign with Christ in this life right now. Amen. See, some people still waiting for the pine pine, the eschatological. But God wants you to experience this in the earth right now. But it has to do with you knowing your identity in him. You are a child. You are a joint heir, an heir of God, made in his image and made in his likeness, seated in heavenly places. The comparable riches of his grace are connected to you. Can you understand that he's seated in the most highest place that you could get of honor? And we seating up here with him. And you walking around, woe is me. Scared. Don't believe God going to do it. Come on, you got to know who you are. You got to be able to exercise that. And that might not be your circumstances, but it's your position. And knowing your position can change your circumstances. This is what I need you to get. You know, this is one time when seeing yourself joined together like a Siamese twin with somebody is okay. <laughs> you yoked to Christ. And operating in that and thinking like that is going to bring you some victory. So if you want to rise above your circumstances, you got to take advantage of your position in Christ. And you have to see yourself that way. We are enthroned with him. We are on high. You know, we are the body of Christ, right? And it's a good illustration because Christ is the head and we are his body. So you can look at me. The church is the body of Christ, and, the, and they are connected to Christ, the head. So my head re represents Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, who is the head of the body, and my body represents the church, the body of Christ. And so since Christ, the head, triumphed over the devil, then the body of Christ is just as triumphant. We all know who we are. We let the world come in here and do what they want to us. We let them just act any kind of way to us because we don't know who we are. We, 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 we settle to pay all this money for stuff because we don't know who we are. I love my old pastor. Way before uh, uh, I even met Pastor Bennett, I was a single woman, uh, Bishop Clarence Given. He always said, and now for some reason, that's gone. <laughs> so what you don't want me to say that, God? God must not. Yeah, that was a download, and it went ploop. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so, so sorry. Anyway, maybe he will uh, bring it back to me. So you got to remember that collectively we are the church, but individually you are the church. So when you go to the bank, the church going to the bank. When you go to work, the church walking up in the bank. I mean, going up to the office. When you go to the grocery store, the church is walking up in the office. And so you got to walk in your authority, the head, seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And you got to be careful how you act. Because if you're not acting like the church, because if you don't know who you are, then you're going to operate in that fallen nature again. Amen? And see, God can't move like he used to in that fallen nature. That's not the position of who you are. And we're waiting for those blessings to be released. And so when the bulb, light bulb comes on and we see our position in Christ, what a difference it's going to make in our lives. We will no longer be the defeated church. We will take our place as the triumphant church. This is what Bishop Givens used to say. He used to say, man, that man knew how to make some money grow. You hear me? This man knew how to hold on to some money. That church was rich, okay, when he passed. Body of Christ, we are, we should not have to pay what the world pays. Amen. 
We are the kingdom of Almighty God. That's what I keep telling Pastor Bennett. We, we should expect favor. We should expect that the price is going to be lowered. We should expect debt cancellation because of who we are. But see, we don't do that. We try to operate like the world. And, and, and Pastor Gibbons, he wouldn't accept it if it wasn't lower. Because he said, I'm the kingdom of God. I'm the church of the living God. I got favor surrounding me like a shield. And it's supposed to come to me, and it's supposed to be easy. Do you see what I'm saying? When you, he knew who he was. He paid everything with cash. House, car, big old church turned the Safeway into a sanctuary. Awesome. But I'm just telling you, because of his mindset, he knew who he was, he could pull this stuff down in the earth realm. And so I'm not trying to beat anybody, Bob, but your position right now has a lot to do with you. And so if you want to change it, then you got to change you. You got to change what you're putting on the inside of you. And what is this, all September? We're in the year of transformation. It's only a few more months to this year. That means God is at a place in the transformation. Where is he in the transformation in you? Do you sense that he's transformed you at all? Do you sense that he's translated you into a new place? Do you sense that you're from how you were January 2007 to how you were September 2007? Because if you don't, this is just for naught. I sense a, a growing up that God is talking about right through here in the spirit. I sense that he's trying to tell me I got to grow up if you want me to release the blessing that I have for you. Because you got to be able to handle what I'm getting ready to release to you. I sense him saying I'm getting ready to take you to a new people. How you going to be? You can't get offended. You can't walk in sin. Can't cuss and damn in the church because somebody told me it's people in here doing it. That's not what God wants. That's not who we are. In the name of Jesus, we're going to go be a light. And guess what? We are on the accelerated program. So when we move, God going to be about a quick work. And that means we got to be in a place to receive what He's going to deliver to us. We got how many more months? October, November, December. It, that means you got to speed it up if you feel like you're behind. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, and you know what we do? As Christians, we fight the struggle. We don't want the struggle. We shun from the struggle. We want the easy life. But I need you to know that the struggle is what's going to propel you to your destiny. I need you to know that the struggle is what's going to change you so you can be ready to receive the blessing that God has for you. This concludes today's broadcast of Successful Living. And remember, if you meditate on the word day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success.